Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. In this video, we are gonna see that how we can find out the indices for the planes in cubic unit cell. So before that video, we have already calculated indices for this particular plane and in this particular video, we'll be doing it for this plane. All right, and we can see here that it's a different kind of system because we can see that the plane is intersecting the region and we might need to shift the region. So it's a different kind of problem. Let's quickly get started and see how we can do that. First of all, we'll have a look on the steps that we are going to follow while finding out the planes indices. Okay, so the first step is to define the coordinate system such that the region is not the part of the plane. So we have to select a coordinate system we have to select a region such that the plane doesn't pass through the region so we saw that this is a problem that we have in our current plane so we'll see that how we can deal with that so this is the first important step that is to define the coordinate system second step is to find out the intercepts that the plane is making with the coordinate axis lines so we'll see that how we can calculate that and this is actually the central you know calculation of the whole um, process of finding out the Miller indices okay once you have calculated the intercepts you are good to go you know the rest of every step is really simple and straightforward the next step after finding out intercepts is to take the reciprocal of each of the intercept and then we have to check if we have any fractions if we have any fractions we'll remove them and after removing the fractions the number that we get are the final Miller indices and we'll enclose them in these circular brackets all right first is the h index second is k and third is l h index corresponds to x intercept okay x index k index corresponds to the y and l index corresponds to the z axis so let's see how we implement these steps and use these steps to find out the miller indices of the planes and we can see here that we have this case and we can see that we have two different planes in here one is the plane a and the other is the plane b the plane a is here in the dark blue color all right this is the plane a and we can see the plane b which is in the light blue color you should know where are the boundaries of the plane all right you should be able to read um the diagrams okay and you can do and you can do it easily by practicing more and more examples so in case of diagrams in these situations and i would say in every case that you you know do in physics the more you practice the better it becomes so yeah we can see here that here this is a part of the plane and this is also the predefined origin we can see this is x-axis that they have already defined for us this is y-axis and vertically upward is the z axis and the plane is also passing through this origin point and that's it, that is problematic we have to shift the region okay that is what we are instructed to do so we'll shift the region well now let's see that what is the most suitable region that helps us to calculate almost all of the intercepts all right so since we can't choose this point as region uh, let's see that what else we can have you know if i choose vertically upward this point okay if i choose this point and um this forward direction would become the positive x-axis right this right direction becomes the positive y-axis and vertically downward will becomes the negative z-axis all right and we can see here that the plane a is cutting the x-axis this is the x-axis the yellow line okay this is the x-axis it is cutting the x-axis at this point all right so this this point will be the x intercept other than that we can see that the plane a is cutting the y-axis at this particular point and it's cutting the z-axis at this particular point it's not a region okay keep that in mind now region is this point this is a new region that we are working with so we can see here that by choosing this particular region, we have successfully got, uh, you know, all of the intercepts. We have successfully made the plane to intersect all of the axis lines and we can easily determine all of the intercepts by just looking at the figure. So that is the power of choosing a suitable origin. I, if I would have choose this point as a region, then they would they would have been a problem with x-axis because we can see that in that particular case that will be the positive x-axis that would be the negative y-axis and the vertically upward would have been the z-axis so we can see that uh, the plane a is cutting the z-axis at this point it's cutting the y-axis at this point but we can see here that um, 
it's not cutting this x axis at any point inside this you know uh, unit cell so it would have you know required us to use the equation of planes and that's totally fine if you want to because the equation of planes is equally really easy to implement however i'm just letting you to uh, find out a suitable region that you know makes your process of finding our and this is really easy so we can see that that coordinate system that i have defined is working very fine and we'll be working with that okay so let's see that um how we go with that all right so we can see that this is the x-axis right this is the y-axis and vertically downward is the z-axis and it's quite apparent that where does the plane a is cutting the x-axis it's exactly at this point all right so this is the x-intercept and they have already told us that this is half uh, the points are half and you can easily check it out like this whole length from this corner to this corner is this length is supposed to be one and we can see that it's cutting here so we can see that this point this point where um, the plane is cutting the x-axis is cutting this whole length into two equal parts okay you can see that this length this length and this length before and after that cutting point are equal in length which means that this point is cutting this whole length into two equal parts when the point is cutting the length into two equal parts then the point or the coordinate of that point is half okay so it's gonna be half in that way we have seen that the x intercept is half all right now let's see what is the y intercept we can see that this is the origin and we always find out the intercept in reference to the origin all right so uh, we can see that here is the origin and here is the point where the plane is cutting the y-axis and it's from origin to the other corner which means that it's one all right so the y intercept is one here all right so when it's from corner to corner the length is always one all right so this length from this corner to this corner is one across the boundaries all right the boundaries that we had defined here this length would be one this length across the unit cell boundaries will be one but this length which is inside the unit cell you know inside the unit cell from corner to corner wouldn't be one all right only these um boundary lengths from corner to corner are one and other than that all of them are different in length so you have to find them but here you can see that it's from this corner to this corner and this length is one now the z intercept is also really easy we can see like it's um the z axis is vertically downward it, it means that it's negative z axis and it's cutting at the other corner here all right i hope you can see that it's cutting right here so that's gonna be uh, our z intercept which is minus one all right now the next step as we have calculated the x y and z intercept is to find out the reciprocals let's find out the reciprocals we know that we got one over two for x one for y and minus one for z now the next step is to take reciprocals okay we mentioned the operation that we are you know gonna perform here that's it's to take reciprocal and let's take reciprocal it's it will become two by one okay one by one and one by minus one and two by one is again two one by one is one and one by minus one is minus one so we can see here that there are no fractions involved and hence these are our final miller indices and we are supposed to write them in these circular brackets so first we'll write the x index which is two second is the y index which is one and third is the z index which is minus one so we'll write it like one and a bar over it okay so uh, we can write you can close the square circular brackets yeah these are the miller indices of plane a now let's see that how we can calculate the miller indices for plane b and uh, we can see here that the predefined coordinate system doesn't work well for this plane b as well okay we can see th that this is also the point that plane b intersects so we cannot use that as origin and we need to shift our region and we'll select a origin um, that enables us to calculate most of the intercepts but just looking by just looking at the figure so let's do that let's see that how we can do that and we can see uh, and test different um, origins and then we can select the one that works the best for us okay it's not always like 
possible to do it at first attempt it's not always possible you have to test various regions and you'll select the one that is working really well for you okay the best for you so we can see that this is our plane okay this is our plane and uh, we need to see that which region works really well for us so we can see that here is the plane cutting the boundary line of the unit cell here is another point this one and this one and we can see here that um if we see one of the boundaries of this plane b this boundary you can see that this boundary is along the x direction as well so it means that this plane is parallel to x direction you can see when one of the boundaries of the plane is parallel to any axis direction if it's parallel to x direction then the intercept would be infinity along x if it's parallel to y direction then the intercept would be infinity for the y intercept and also if it's parallel to z then the z intercept would be infinity so it depends which um direction it is parallel to so we can see that this is also the uh, boundary of the plane and it's also completely parallel to x direction so the x intercept we have quickly found it to be infinity okay so we are interested in finding out or selecting a origin that enables us to calculate y and z intercept because that is what we are left with so we can see that we can choose this point as a region really you know easily and safely because this is the um, x direction okay and beware that where is the plan b okay you can see the plan b is here okay and we can select this point this is as y axis and vertically downward as the z axis all right and we can see that um, the x intercept is infinity this is x direction and this is one of the um, planes boundary so they are parallel to each other x in x is infinity x intercept is infinity now let's see what is the y intercept we can see here that this is the plane b and it's cutting the y axis let me show where is the y axis this is the y axis it's cutting this um pink line at this point okay and it's half they have already told us so it's half half and positive because it's right direction if it's right direction it's positive y if it's left direction it would be negative y and this vertically downward is the z-axis and we can see that the plane b is cutting the z-axis right at the corner point if it's cutting at the corner point then the intercept will be 1 and since it's negative direction so it would be minus 1 so we have successfully found three of the intercepts which are x y and z intercept and we can see that we didn't have to you know use the equation of planes here sometimes students you know hesitate using that equation because many of the students are not comfortable using mathematics so this is really clever way to do that you can choose your origin and you know go with the one that suits you let's do the next steps here so we found x intercept y intercept and z intercept let's write them down here they were infinity 1 over 2 and minus 1 now the next step is to take reciprocal We'll take reciprocal here and it will become 1 over infinity, 2 by 1 and 1 by minus 1. 1 over, in, one over infinity is 0, 2 by 1 is 2 and 1 by minus 1 is minus 1. We can see that there is no fraction involved in here. So these are our final Miller indices for the plan B and we can write them in these brackets. Okay, so we'll first write the x index which is 0 second is the y index which is 2 and third is the z index which is minus 1 so we'll, we'll write it like that 1 and a bar over it okay so 0 2 1 bar are the Miller indices of plane B in that way we have successfully caught and calculated the Miller indices of plane A and B in this video and we'll be doing it for more of the planes in later videos till then take care and goodbye also if you have any questions you can ask me in question <laughs> question session you can ask uh, comment section